Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Monday, April 4, 2022. American Airlines will start offering international flights out of the Ian Fleming International Airport later this year, allowing for non-stop flights between Miami and Ocho Rios on Wednesdays and Saturdays. Transport and Mining Minister Audley Shaw made the announcement in a press statement on Friday. He says the decision follows meetings held earlier this year with senior executives of American Airlines, along with several government and private sector officials. Flights will be offered through the Envoy E-175 aircraft with a capacity to seat between 76 and 88 passengers in business and economy class. The airline will be flying the smaller aircrafts into Boscobel two times per week, commencing in November. To accommodate the new service, Minister Shaw says government is ensuring that adequate support systems are in place at the Ian Fleming Airport. These include additional building space for staffing and adequate firefighting equipment. The transport minister says this decision is well-timed as the country also looks forward to American Airlines beginning flights from Austin, Texas to Montego Bay this June. This, he says, will greatly improve the country's tourism product, but also offer easier access for the Jamaican diaspora living in these and neighboring states to visit and return home. A national identification system, NIDS Implementation Task Force, has been launched to drive adoption of the national identification card. Minister Without Portfolio in the Office of the Prime Minister, Floyd Green, is chairman of the task force, which is comprised of private and public sector leaders. During the group's first meeting last week, Representatives from the government agencies reported that they were ready to update their information systems to adopt and support NIDS usage. Members of the Private Sector Organization of Jamaica, PSOJ, said they anticipated that the National Identification System would simplify the services they offer to the public. Program Director of the NIDS Project, Dr. Warren Vernon, says the NIDS card production and vetting center is 95% completed. Minister Green is reiterating the need for the public's confidence in the security of the cards, pointing out that they possess high-level encryption features with governance and oversight to deter misuse. The Department of Correctional Services, DCS, has had its human capacity boosted with the recent intake of 93 correctional officers. The passing out parade ceremony for the 81st intake of correctional officers was held at the Carl Rattray Staff College in Runaway Bay, St. Anne. The cohort of newly inducted officers includes 78 males and 15 females. Minister of State in the Ministry of National Security, Xavier Main, reminded the correctional officers that the DCS plays an important role in improving national security and safeguarding public order. The department contributes to national security by securing supervising, rehabilitating, and reintegrating offenders as productive, law-abiding citizens. Always be your best. Act boldly with the strategies and procedures while utilizing the knowledge learned. He also warned the graduates of the consequences they will face should they engage in corruption. The Corrections Act was amended in December of 2021 to impose not just heavier fines but provide for prison time for officers who are found to be in breach of their calling and their duties and facilitate the movement of prohibited art items within our correctional facilities. Jamaica is looking to secure large-scale investors coming out of this year's World Free Zone Organization Conference to be held in Montego Bay in June. Minister of Industry, Investment and Commerce, Senator Aubin Hill, says the country will be looking to attract investors from the 1,000 to 1,500 people among the very high-level spending investment community that will be in attendance. And of course, the Jamaica Special Economic Zone Authority is preparing investment packages for all our visitors so they can see what we have in Jamaica in which they can invest. And of course, the climate to invest in Jamaica is welcoming and is really attractive for investors, especially given our local citation very close to the biggest market in the world. The United States, and of course, you add Canada to that. Minister Hill was addressing a recent JIS think tank. 
Acting CEO of the Jamaica Special Economic Zone Authority, Gary Scott, is chairman of the Local Organizing Committee for the World Free Zones Annual International Conference 2022. He says Jamaica's plan to set up large-scale special economic zones across the island will be showcased at the conference. Coming closely out of the pandemic, that supply chain's demand um, have changed, and so Jamaica wants to position itself in such a way that we can attract investors, investments that will see large-scale special economic zones being built here in Jamaica. He says the Jamaica Promotions Corporation, JAMPRO, and the Port Authority of Jamaica will also seek to stimulate investors' appetite for several other logistics and infrastructure-related projects. And finally, Small business operators in Port Maria and its environs are benefiting from flood relief checks to help recover from losses suffered due to severe flooding in the coastal town earlier this year. A total of 209 business operators will benefit from the support totaling more than $8 million. An initial 35 flood relief checks were handed over at the St. Mary's Anglican Church Hall last week. Beneficiaries are receiving checks valued at $25,000, $50,000, $75,000, or $100,000 based on the level of damage sustained as determined by an assessment done by the Social Development Commission, SDC. Minister of Local Government and Rural Development Desmond McKenzie says this initial disbursement is intended to assist the operators get on the path to recovery. At the same time, he says a technical team has been established to address the problem of flooding in the town. There's a giant, giant up approach. The National Works Agency, the Municipal Cooperation, the Ministry, Shuad Pem, and our technical team is looking at how we can work to ease some of the challenges. The Ministry of Labor and Social Security is also aiding approximately 800 affected homeowners and more than 100 arcade vendors impacted by flooding. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching.